Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer have done very well since that 6-1 against Spurs. We've beaten Newcastle, we've drawn against Chelsea and we've had two huge results in the Champions League. And for a man, a manager, sorry, who is going to be under real scrutiny and real pressure this season, he needed those performances. Everybody looked at this couple of months period for United as a time where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was either going to prove himself as a manager or get sacked as United manager. So what I want to do in this video is I want to talk about what Solskjaer's plan is moving forward. The changes that he's made since that 6-1 defeat to Spurs, the changes that we've seen and the changes that we still need to see going forward if United are somehow going to be turned into title contenders. Now, before I do start, I want to say I think a lot of these pressures wouldn't exist had Solskjaer been back properly in this summer, and all fingers point back towards that, and I will maintain that no matter what happens this season. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. And as I said, let's talk about what I think Solskjaer's plan should be going forward to keep this momentum building and to make it better. I think after that Spurs game, all of us would agree defence was the biggest issue at United. We've got a hell of an exciting front six. No matter who plays in what position, it's exciting. But that back four, that back five, questionable. But United, since that Spurs game, we've been much better defensively. And for me, looking at our defence now, from where we have been this season, I can only really see a positive way forward. I think Harry Maguire's come through that rough patch, and it was a hell of a rough patch. But Solskjaer backed him, just like Solskjaer backed De Gea. And De Gea's come through it, and Maguire's come through it as well. A header he scored against Newcastle, but good performances against Chelsea, against Leipzig. He's done well. And if you look at the other defenders, Lindelof, quietly in the background, his performances have been improving massively. Twan is now fit again. Shaw, against Leipzig, was probably our... Well, he wasn't man of the match because Rashford got a hat-trick, but he was one of our best players. And I think Tellez coming in is going to spark Shaw to improve and Wan Bissaka got his first goal against Newcastle. I think look, United's defence has been shit, let's be honest, this season so far. But I can only see it getting better and better and better. And the early indications are there that having Fred and Scott McTominay playing as a sort of a midfield two in front of the defence, it really shores up United's defence. And not, all, not everybody would agree that that's the best midfield formation to use. And when we've got the likes of Van der Beek and Bruno Fernandes and Pogba in the team, you can understand that. But Solskjaer shored up our defence and it really helped. And for me, looking at another a, a big problem that I think faces United it, is the formation. I did a, pre a video a couple of weeks ago looking at what I personally felt was the best formation for United this season. And it was the 4 one 2 one, two, the, the diamond, the midfield diamond that we used against Leipzig. It worked perfectly. Matic sitting deep with Pobre in front of him, with Fred in front of him, with Van der Beek up there. It's, it's the formation that gets the most out of our midfield. It's the formation where we can have two strikers. And given that we've got Greenwood, we've got Rashford, we've got Martial, we've got Cavani, that's perfect for two strikers. We don't really have wingers. So why play with a team that has two wingers? It doesn't really make any sense. So I really want to see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer stick with that formation because for me it's the best. We saw it against Leipzig. Look man, it, we didn't just beat Leipzig, we absolutely tore them a new one. I think they conceded what three goals in seven games coming into that and we scored five against one of the best teams in Germany. A week after we beaten PSG, six points from those first two games. Yes, please. But for me, a big problem of United, I think, has been sticking to that 4-2-3-1. It just doesn't work. It's not good enough. We don't have the wingers for it. This formation, the diamond, it gets the most out of the team. And as we saw against Leipzig, it can deliver goals, goals, goals. Before I move on to the next one, I want to shout out to OneFootball for sponsoring this video. You know OneFootball by now. They've been back in United People's TV for a long time. And if you haven't used their app already, it really is. A very easy, very good to use, and more importantly, free app that we get all the latest United news and the match stats before, during, and after a game. So make sure you follow the link in the description to download the One Football app. It is free. I would encourage you to do so. But let's take a look at what I feel is the next issue that United really need to resolve. And I probably should have mentioned this one earlier in the video, if I'm being honest, because passing out from the back 
has to be the most painful thing about watching United at the moment. Our ability to transition from defence through the midfield is terrible. Absolutely abysmal. And that has to change. And for me, I don't know whether that... I don't know whether that's really going to change with the players that we have, but we've got players like Van der Beek in there now. Uh, but is he going to really be the person that receives the ball in the position where Matic or McTominay or Fred plays? It's down to them, really, to be able to bring that through the midfield or Pogba dropping deeper, but I don't really want him to. Let me know in the comments below how you would resolve this problem. Because for me, it's a huge problem for United. Our inability to really properly play out from the back with the ball at our feet. Until we resolve that, we're never, I don't think, really going to challenge for the title. Because for me, it's, it's a key issue that still exists in the majority of the games that we play. It makes our tempo slow. It makes us quite predictable. It makes us quite easy to defend against because teams don't really have to pressure us anywhere until it gets towards that final third and then just squeeze us out and send it back. United need to improve in that massively. And I want to know from you what you think Solskjaer's plan should be because Solskjaer might just see it down as a confidence thing as you saw from Matic against uh, Leipzig you know he's probably the most adept at doing that but for me it's why we needed so badly to sign a defensive midfielder a top class because you look if you've got Paul Popper and you're sp and you've got Bruno Fernandes and you've got Van der Beek they're elite level in their positions we don't have an elite level defensive midfielder anymore Matic is years past it. Fred isn't a defensive midfielder. As good as he's been in our recent games, I, just, I see him better as a midfield too than individually as a defensive midfielder. And I don't think McTominay is trusted enough by Solskjaer to play that role yet. It's because he's not good enough to play that role yet. It's a very demanding role to play individually. And because we don't have that, I think that's why we struggle so much with passing out from the back. And also our two centre-backs need to just get that confidence and improve. And I think that is coming. So let me know what you think about that problem in the comments below. And one huge issue that was facing United prior to this good run of form, I would say is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's in-game management. Now, we can always question a manager starting 11. So many of us were left scratching our heads when we saw the lineup against Newcastle and then we won 4-1. But that was mainly because the last 15 minutes we had the right players on the pitch. Now, I think the best example tactically that we've seen recently in a positive way for Solskjaer was the PSG game because that was a game where United were in total control for the first half. First 15 minutes of the second half, PSG were in total control and the game was slipping away from us. Solskjaer then made early subs. We brought Popper on and he helped us bring the control back. Now that is something that Solskjaer, I would say, hasn't done too often. I think against Chelsea as well, we made a double substitution in the 57th minute. That's what I want to see. I want to see Solskjaer making positive substitutions early enough in a game that they can actually influence the game. I'm not talking about bringing Van der Beek on for 90 seconds at the end of a match when it's all done and dusted. That's not in-game management to change a game. But Solskjaer has shown me against PSG, shown me there against Leipzig. You can put Chelsea in it if you want as well. That was a game where, let's be honest, we wanted the clean sheet more than the victory, but it was important to just stop that just influx of goals so I understood why we played the way we did there against Chelsea and ultimately we would all have taken a win against Newcastle a draw against Chelsea and a win against Leipzig and PSG that's more than we could have expected going into these four games but this season really is such an opportunity for United and for Solskjaer because if Liverpool and City were playing how they were playing last season we would have no chance no chance of catching them whatsoever but the reality is, is Liverpool are wobbling. They don't have Van Dijk. They're going to wobble all season. City have just been continuing to wobble. And signing 60 million Ruben Diaz hasn't solved their defensive problems either. Arsenal are Arsenal. Chelsea are, as you saw against us, they can be life. They can be toothless. But Chelsea are dangerous. But there's not one team there. Spurs, they're in good form at the moment. But there's not one team in the Premier League now that is just going to run away with it this season. So therefore, United really do have an opportunity to make ourselves title contenders. Now, we need a run of wins, put that together, especially against our rivals, to really swing that momentum. But given where we were, 
after the 6-1 against Spurs to where we are now, only a few games and a few weeks later, there's been huge improvements. United, we've got the attackers. We've got the attacking play. For me, the formation, keeping that diamond formation, Solskjaer, is going to be crucial to the momentum. It just suits us too well not to use it, in my opinion. Our defence, I think, will continue to get better. We've got to wait for Alex Telles to come in because he's got coronavirus, typical. But sure, I think Shaw, Maguire, Tuanzebe, Lindelof, Wan-Bissaka, they've all been horrendous individually at different points this season. But I, th I like to feel that it's not completely behind us, but I, I like to feel that the players have felt the trust of Solskjaer, have felt the backing of the manager and are now going to turn that into performances. Because defensively, we have to be sound. Just like to, to win anything, you have to be sound from front to back. United have got it in abundance going forward. Marcus Rashford at the moment, sensational first career hat-trick for United, but we've got Bruno Fernandes even getting left on the bench against Leipzig and didn't come on, and it came on obviously, but we've got quality going forward. We just need to improve that midfield defensively, that transition from, from defence to attack that City and Liverpool make look so easy, but United make look so difficult. That needs to improve. I want to see defensively individual performances improve. I want to see Solskjaer's in-game management continue to improve. But what problems do you think United still face going forward between now and the end of the season if we really are going to turn ourselves into title contenders, which has to be the aim this season. Always was the aim, always is the aim for United. It should be anyway. I felt and I still feel really that it's inevitable that Solskjaer will get sacked. But I hope I'm wrong. I really do, and I hope United and Solskjaer prove me wrong that this squad really is capable of doing more than I think it is. But let me know what you think about all of that in the comments below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. And as I said earlier in the video, shout out to OneFootball. Make sure you download the OneFootball app. There is a link in the description. But let me know what you think Solskjaer's plan is to really turn United into title contenders this season. Mm -hmm.